Hi, it's Pola from Pola Quilting. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Every time I go to the scrap store, I find some fabrics there which are actually kit stuff. I don't um, show you tutorials with kit stuff very often, but uh, during the you know November December time, we make a lot of quilts for Project Linus. So every uh, child in the hospital during Christmas get the quilt. Uh, so I like to contribute in, in that program. So I showed you one tutorial this one uh, when I did like bigger blocks with very Christmassy fabric But I had a look in my cupboard and I've got all of those kids stuffs here as well I've got another tray. That's not even all I also have got a lot of uh, plain fabric solids and I was thinking how about we mix those two together to make a nice uh, lap size ish quilt um, using those fabrics together. So I've got a few of those um, bundles which are very nice colorful uh, kids fabrics and I was thinking if I design something with this fabric uh, and I don't want to really cut it much so I would like to go with bigger blocks possibly maybe 12 or 11 inches so if I do grid 5 by 5 that's 25 blocks and I've got nice uh, quite big quilt for a child so I will try to mix this fabric actual just squares with something else made from the remaining fabrics so let me quickly uh, put it on the piece of paper to calculate how many of blocks I need of each uh, so how many of those I will need and how many of those other blocks will need and I'll show you my other blocks and how they will go together well I didn't plan to make actual pattern <laughs> but you sometimes you have to go where the inspiration takes you so I've designed this mini quilt uh, well not mini each of the blocks is 12 and a half inches so nice um, lap quilt so all of those like dark blue spots here are those fabrics uh, so I just want to have a little bit of contrast there then we'll make a star legs they can be wonky star legs and I will use red um, color uh, here are uh, those are just random uh, plain colors and I will pull out some uh, fabrics from my uh, uh, box here here I will make a uh, um, half square triangles to put it in and the best blocks are those and those are the ones we will spend some time uh, making today I will probably uh, make a second part of when I'm kind of walk you through the rest of the pattern and I will also place this pattern on my website so if you like to have a handout um, with all the dimensions just head there and you can download this as well so let's just focus on this block today so this block is 12 and a half inch square but we will be doing some uh, improv blocks for that one and I will use both plain and colorful fabric just to make a little bit of breakage there between um, those uh, colorful colors because you know it, it's going to be quite busy if I just put uh, all of those uh, kids um, fabrics next to each other so if I break it down with the plain fabric it should look uh, much better so first I need to know how big that that kind of cuts I need for for that block so block will be 12 and a half inch um, square so I know that uh, here uh, some of that distance will be taken by my wave so but I will be making very gentle curves today so it's not going to be a lot taken by it so I think if I've got a piece of fabric cut maybe to be, to be on the safe side let's let's say it's going to be a strip of 14 inches that will give us plenty of uh, space to square it up later I just don't want to kind of you know be in the situation when I run out now this way this way it depends how many of the cuts I would like to do here in the middle because every cut will take definitely at least half an, half an inch of the fabric maybe even more depend on your seam allowance so I would probably say I would like to do let me see so this is the distance of 12 and a half inches this ruler is 12 and a half inches so if I cut one two three four let's say put on the safe side five times if I cut five times minimum half an inch for it that is at least two and a half inches so I would probably add an extra one inch or maybe one and a half to kind of cover it so four inches my blog is 12 and a half so I need to add 12 and a half uh, to it so my strip if I cut them to 16 and a half maybe even 17 
I should be able to uh, square it up later um, to, to uh, 12 and a half when I'm ready. So let me prepare all the fabric. So I need to iron all of it. So how many blocks do I need of those? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need eight of those blocks. So I could really do is I could stack eight pieces of fabrics together and cut through it and I will have eight blocks. Or I can stack four and do two stacks of four and I will have eight blocks. So uh, to do that, I will need to have a good blade, good new blade in my cut rotary cutter. So just to mention, somebody have sent me some uh, blades to test, which I will put in my rotary cutter now. I won't tell you where they came from. I will just say they came from America. So those who are living in America, uh, I might have a good link for you from very good blades. Uh, but I will test them first uh, for the next maybe two, three months. You know, I do sew a lot, so they're going to have a quite good usage. And I will give you feedback uh, when my uh, testing is concluded. And I will also give you a link where you can uh, purchase them. They are titanium coated uh, blades, so I've got high expectations from them. <laughs> so let's get started. I will go iron my uh, fabrics and I'll bring them and we'll do some uh, gentle curves. Okay, so I've got uh, eight pieces of fabric here. So they are, like mentioned, 14 by um, 18 inches. doesn't have to be exact because we'll be squaring it up, but, you know, close enough. So I've got four colorful ones and four little bit more plain. And I will just stack them uh, in layers. One colorful, one plain, one colorful, one plain. It's just going to be easier later to move those pieces around because I will just move two at a time. It's stripey on top. This is quite nice fabric. I've got a lot of that one. This this type of fabric is good on its own to make a border or something like this. If you cut it like that, got instant nicely stripey or border. Anyway, so I've got my stack ready, and now let's get to cutting. So I've got my new blade here in this uh, um, rotary cutter, and we're going gentle. We're really going gentle. We don't want to go any anything kind of strange here we're just going gentle one so I went this way here I might go this way just to make like a bottleneck here or go the same direction it really you know it's, it's your block so you do what you like or what is more comfortable with your hand sometimes you know uh, we've got a preference which way we want to go so that's two as I can see eight pieces no problem with cutting. I'm not even pushing that uh, uh, blade that hard. I mean, it's a new blade, so that's kind of... It should work that way anyway. We'll see how it progresses as I'm kind of using it uh, for longer. So that's three. Four. Five. And... Could I make six? I don't know. Let's see. So that's 12 and a half. But obviously, like I said, it will shrink and move on. And this is why exactly I've made quite a lot of kind of make it over a hang here. But the thing is, if I sew all of it and it's not enough, I can always um, add another piece of fabric and just go through it. So I'm not so that much worried, but it's just easier. Okay, I will do one more cut. So six. One, two, three, four, five six cuts and just sew it and i will see if i you know finish sewing and it will look like i can make another cut then i will do it <laughs> okay six so first stack i will leave as is then second stack so this works as a plain fabric though it has a little bit of pattern but it works as a plain fabric so the second fabric i want to have is something with a pattern so i'll just move that one to the bottom so the third fabric i want to have with plain color so i'm making i'm moving two fabrics to the bottom next one we do take a pattern so that'll be blue i'm just going with the order of those uh, stack how they were kind of done so next one so the, whatever is next after blue it's that bright red and then we've got butterflies 
and that's it we are at the end so let me just check bottom two that they are not the same they wouldn't because that would be the bottom top from here okay so I'm ready now to stitch it and like with that previous tutorial or last tutorial on um, curves uh, I will just chain piece it so I will sew all of that stack first here those two then I will take it out from machine add the third stack add the fourth stack add the fifth stack sixth stack and then at that point I will actually see how wide my strip is because maybe I'll be ready to uh, kind of uh, trim it here already I don't know I will see if not then I will just add that bit and definitely by then I should have my 12 and a half inches ready okay so I'm ready to chain piece my first two stacks I've got my quarter foot inch uh, on the machine but you don't have to you know you just want to have an even seam allowance it doesn't have to be quarter it can be you know anything you can come up with we will be scoring up those blocks at the end anyway so no problem so uh, because those pieces were even and I'm not worried that about uh, you know fabric being eaten because I gave myself quite allowance here I'm just going to line up the top of the fabrics here take few stitches and then go very slowly and don't pull the fabrics you know there's a bias there now the cut on the bias go slowly every time you feel like the fabric is not aligned anymore just stop move the fabric stop move the fabric sometimes you might need to uh, put the foot up to align it better you're only interested about half an inch here between the needle and kind of end of your foot that's where you need to focus on don't worry about what's happening uh, below there and just go slowly match that quarter inch distance as best as you can and just so slowly okay so that's the first strip in and like i said i'll just chain piece all of those stacks and then I'll go back to the first piece and add third one, fourth one and so on so on. So um, I, I've kind of covered a lot of details in my last tutorial so I will refer you to that one. There's a link in the description below. finish my first two stacks and I'm starting uh, on adding the third one uh, just a few tips here it helps if the beginning and the end of the stack is kind of straight ish it will kind of give you a nice start and finish and we will be cutting it anyway so you, you won't be seeing that straight in but that helps if if you haven't done the curves before also narrow down your stitch length um, so you know on those curves here when you need to stop and readjust it will be easier because the distance between the first you know each next stitch is going to be smaller so you can make your curves uh, better so that's basically that about the extra tips on this and this is how it looks so far uh, looks very nice uh, I will be using a starch later to iron it out is which way seems to to iron whichever fabric takes you it will look uh, flattest if you go with the fabric um, that's my kind of rule of the thumb so the starch I'm using I've put some uh, in the links uh, below uh, for, uh, for the kind of shopping list what I'm using here in UK and what you can uh, replace it in if you are in US so starch definitely helps to make it nice and flat before we are going to be squaring it up I finished sewing on my blocks and I will show you how they look before squaring up because they uh, they look very nice already and if not that I had to fit them in that uh, uh, quilt pattern I may have even left them like this as a rectangle so that's in a minute but I just want to walk you quickly um, through how to kind of start your um, waves when you're sewing so I did mention that if that beginning when you're doing your wave if that beginning here were the side where you will be starting sewing on which is the top here if it's quite straight it makes your life easier so that's the one method you can kind of go with that every time you're starting you want to have that uh, beginning 
I don't know, half an inch, an inch straight. So when you're coming to the sewing machine and you're putting those two things together on top of each other, you just line up the, you know, the top edge, the side, you start sewing and when you get to the curves, obviously you start moving the fabric. So again, I'm aligning the tops. So the second uh, method uh, I'm using maybe when I have not kind of had that uh, top very straight is let's do the curve. And let's say it's it's not that straight. Yes, I, I I make it a little bit more curvy. So what I do then when I'm putting those two things together, I need to make sure that the part I'm going to start from, so as you can see I have to turn this piece. So when I'm starting with the quarter inch, my needle will hit that point between one fabric, second fabric, and this is how they are aligned here. So I'm aligning against the right side, but this fabric needs to stick out to kind of make that point here meeting. And it, it, I'm not it, I'm not um, worried about how that top edge will look like, but if I don't start it that way, those um, uh, waves will not meet in the right point, so you will have uh, packers and all the other stuff uh, coming in. And the third method, which I found uh, very kind of easy to do, uh, where I don't have a stro very uh, straight top. Let me do the third cut. Something like that is. So I'm still aligning my top edge. This is where the fabrics meet. So this is the beginning of this fabric, beginning of this fabric. They all align at the top in this point and I'm coming in and I'm literally taking two stitches and my stitch length is very uh, small uh, so it's easier to work with the curves I've mentioned it before. So two stitches literally just holding this uh, fabric here in place and then I pu put my foot up in the machine and start turning and that makes basically that the uh, previous step I showed you where I kind of align it so I'm meeting in the in the uh, quarter inch spot that basically makes it but it's easier because I don't have to kind of find that spot I just start straight I take two stitches that holds that fabric for me and then I'm start turning around and this is the method I've started using and works perfectly for me if I don't have the top edge very straight so this is what the blocks look like um, before I even square them up. So if, like I've mentioned, if it was not part of a pattern, I pretty much would have left them like this and actually not squared them up to a square. I would have squared them up to the rectangle. I just uh, put the cord like that. I might need, uh, you know, more blocks depending on the size. But they look pretty cool. So this is one layout. Or if you look at the top edge now, this is what the second layout could look like if I go with the rectangles. Obviously, if it's a rectangle, I would be able to um, do it both ways to mix it up unless you work it out with the magic numbers, which we could as well. Anyway, let's take it to the squaring up and see what the final block looks like. Okay, so I did uh, use starch when I was ironing them to make it nice and flat. Um, as you can see with the seams, they, there is really no like a elbow which way I was going. I was following the fabric whichever it wanted to go because those cuts obviously are on the bias uh, if you kind of pull the fabric you may have a small ripple somewhere but if they are small I wouldn't worry about it because once you quilt and once you wash a quilt all of those small imperfections will disappear so don't kind of overstress it if it's something big you can go you know you can go and cut it again and stitch it again uh, that's not the problem as well so I do need 12 and a half inch block so I did mention that I will have a look after those five cuts how does that look with the ruler do I need to add another cut here or I'm just going with what I've got and actually I quite like how it looks that that edge is quite kind of thicker on this side but again it's a preference whatever you want to do you do you like I said you can stack them again cut one more time mix the fabric and then you will be ready I I will just go with what I've got uh, so I can just align the fabric it's not it's it's easy squaring up here just I've got because I've got actually ruler of that size it's easy uh, I will have a little bit of fabric here left which I can obviously put in my in my scrappy box mm. 
Now I've aligned that fabric for squaring up so it kind of gives me the most of the size as well because this is still usable if I'm doing some string pieces that will definitely uh, be you know be in use so that's another scrap which I can carry on with and then the other side so just a minimal of the waste here at the other side is really just to make it a nice and even block is ready. So I'll finish squaring up all the remaining ones and pop them on the design board because we definitely uh, can make a quilt out just of those blocks uh, and it will look uh, very nice. I really like the combination of pattern fabric with a um, just solid. It kind of it's calming it down a little bit but also brings those uh, colors out of those uh, pattern fabric so uh, if you have a stack of something like that uh, ri lying around in your sewing room it's, it's worth uh, trying and you know I'm using kids fabric here because it's going to be lined with quilt but you can use any fabric really So here you've got just a few layouts you can work out uh, from those blocks. Obviously you can add um, corner stones, you can do some um, snowballing on the corners, you can do uh, a you know snowballing but not the, with the square, just do another maybe like a drunkard's path corner there. So it, it is a start for great block, I mean the block is great as it is and it's big so if you make few of those you have a quilt in no time and such effective especially with those kind of bold colors there. I really love it. I only made eight because that's how many I need I for, for my pattern so I'm missing that one corner there. But I hope you show you what you can do with those blocks uh, and I really kind of want to encourage you to start with the curves if you haven't done it before. I hope you will come back for the second part of that uh, pattern uh, to finish it off. Uh, hopefully by, also by that time I will have uh, finished my first quilt from this tutorial. I'm, I'm just preparing it to quilting now. If you have any questions please make sure you leave them in the comments below. You can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, uh, Facebook and my own website. All links are in the description below um, so you can follow up uh, if you wish to. Thank you for joining, thank you for watching and see you next time.